Hey guys, welcome back to Avius Grand Tournament. We have two matches left to end day one. And this is going, you know, quite long. We had six matches. We started at 6 p.m. CST, so six hours and 24 minutes ago. And now we're left with two matches. So between uh, Neiria and Tom60229. And after that, there's uh, Stan Sivka, Dreamhack Romania champion uh, versus Ost Kaka. And first of all, yeah, we have the Neuria vs. Tom uh, matchup, and we didn't get the lineups yet. But what I can tell about those players, so give me some insight. Yeah, Tom, I mean, for those of you who even aren't familiar with the, the Asian scene particularly, Tom should be one of those players you have heard of. He's made a huge splash on so many tournaments, like absolute open qualifier monster, qualified for something like three straight Gfinities. He's won Asus Rog Summer. Um, yeah, he's probably just the, the, the most successful player worldwide in terms of the Asian scene. You know, mm -hmm. the one the ones mm -hmm. make the biggest impact on the Western scene, at least. Um, Nairia, another name that's been around for a long time. You guys should have no trouble uh, recognizing him. Member of Team Liquid, of course. Um, so yeah, just a, a huge high-level matchup between uh, two real powerhouses of Hearthstone right now. Yeah, and um, Tom is on the team Yoi Flash Wolves. Right. Um, if you're expecting me to give you some sort of explanation of what that is, then you're going to be waiting a long time, Lothar, because I, I, mean, no I have idea. no idea. But the winnings of Tom are really impressive. Mm -hmm. First at Asus Rock Summer 2015, mm -hmm. then 13-16 at Hearthstone World Championships 2014, mm -hmm. first at Summer Circuit Finals for $10,000, so that's nice, third Hong Kong Esports Tournament, and Definitive Summer Masters, third to fall. And then first on BlizzCon World Champions Korea Taiwan Qualifier, and first on Iron Forum Night Tournament, which is some Asian stuff, but seems like a okay premier tournament so yeah really impressive run mm -hmm. and we got the matchups right now naria plays paladin druid warrior when tom plays mage hunter paladin interesting uh first thing jumps out at me no patron warrior from tom and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have seen lothar tom play patron warrior at quite a few tournaments in the past um yeah and he has his own take on on playing the deck. He plays it a lot more uh, a lot more on curve. Just plays his minions out, plays for tempo with it. Um, yeah, yeah. I was there when he was he went had the explanation, and I was like, um, right. That's not exactly the way ninety five percent of people are playing it. So yeah, um, we I'm not broke, exactly we sure if it's better. Broke down this uh, this this patron warrior thing from Tom in some detail when we were on the the analyst deck desk together at Gfinity, where he, mm -hmm. he considers it a tempo deck, and that just seems really weird to both of us. But let's not tread over old ground. The important point is that he's decided not to bring it now. So you know that could be that he just for some reason doesn't feel like it's good in the meta right now which would be weird or like the only other possible alternative is maybe he's lost faith in his performance with the deck a little bit mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. i don't know hard to say but mage hunter paladin still a very solid lineup i believe all the way through into game seven this is the first hunter we are seeing in the tournament right is it i think so someone was playing hunter but i think there was no point uh, that like he didn't get to use it and? i think someone had the hunter in this deck list. All right, maybe. I'm pretty confident we have definitely not seen a hunter actually being played, but it might have been mm -hmm. in someone's lineup. That might be true. Um, from Nyria's side, Paladin Druid Warrior, pretty solid lineup. We would expect Secret Paladin, just the standard double combo, uh, mid range fast druid, and then Patron Warrior. Nyria has had a little bit of a history with Control Warrior, but I know that he's a very accomplished patron player as well, so I would expect to see Patron coming out from Nyria. Uh, from Tom's side, again, the big mystery is a mage. Is this a freeze mage? Is it a tempo mage? Is it a mech mage? You know, what, what do you think we're going to see from the mage from Tom? Usually when we um, when I see Asian metagame, mm -hmm. it's about all being the aggressive player. Okay. So I would be not surprised if this is like a form of a tempo mage. Mm -hmm. It might be very different from what we usually see in the European or NA uh, servers, but I would say it's still it's still the aggressive aggressive version. And uh, yeah, by the way, guys, remember exclamation mark giveaway. It actually gives away something. So be sure to type that to be um, in the 
to have a chance of winning something. <laughs> and uh, remember when you're tweeting also, use the hashtag AbiusGT to be on screen for your five minutes of fame. Yeah, and we'll be jumping into the game really fast. Yeah, I'm not I quite think. sure what the holdup is here. I think we're just waiting for the, the players to, to feel comfortable and to start. I don't think there's anything uh, organizationally getting us in the way, but mm -hmm. um, I guess we haven't really talked about how these lineups match up directly against each other. So do you feel like either player has a has an advantage in this mm. these, with these lineups? I feel like the Druid might be really falling short to Tom's lineup. Yeah, because I agree at, with that. If Mage has, is a Tempo Mage, mm -hmm. Hunter is a mid range, mm -hmm. and Paladin is whatever. Mm -hmm. Then usually the Druid falters. But of course, Druid can have like a you know innovate innovate coin Doctor Boom, and you just you know everyone everyone is just like oh this this shouldn't happen in a card <laughs> game you know to play a Doctor Boom on turn two that doesn't really necessarily feel good for your opponent. Yep, I definitely agree with you. Um, the flip side of that is that there's three pretty clean matchups for the Patron Warrior there. Um, I think it's pretty comfortable against any of those matchups if it is yeah. a fairly aggressive mech mage. But... but this is the conquest format. Right. It doesn't necessarily exactly. mean anything. And as we talked about before, you know, Patron Warrior getting a win isn't hugely important. You almost have that as a given that Patron Warrior is going to win a game over the course of three attempts. So. Um, that isn't mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. too big a strong point for the deck, but we do see uh, a web spinner in the hunter deck from Tom, so very very likely to just be an outright mid range deck. And well, we saw. We seven also time. see um, zombie chow from uh, Nyria's paladin, so this is probably just a mid range paladin as well. Okay, so he's not believing in the power of mysterious challenger. Right. Um, so in this situation, even with our, with the zombie chow on board, you just go for the web spinner, right? Um, there's no point in playing anything else. Yeah, I agree. Um, just probably just curve out from web spinner to uh, to haunted creeper is the plan as he sees it right now, and just have some resistant minions to the to the zombie chow. But mini bot coming down puts a lot of uh, pressure on this board, and he might even consider. Oh, wow. Uh, King's Alec is uh, not a bad card to pick up here, but it's not that bad card, but you can't really play it. The same goes for the Mad Scientist because if right. you only play um, Freezing Traps, mm -hmm. you would basically say you you take your Zombie Chow back. Yeah, and that's like horrible. So... And uh, setting up the Zombie, the uh, sorry, the Haunted Creeper here, if it is ignored, which seems like a likely play from uh, from Tom. Uh, actually, he has to play around Coin Houndmaster at this point, so maybe he will choose to trade it down, especially since he's about to play Master for Battle, and that just gives mm -hmm. him a perfectly clean trade anyway. And I think you should play Master for Battle as soon as possible against Hunter, right. because otherwise you're being uh, probably just outraced by a, a Unleash the Hound knife juggle combo on 10 5. I like his decision to push face with the mini bot as well there, by the way. That that Divine Shield, the absolute minimum value it can ever get is hitting a one power minion. So mm -hmm, there's, there's mm -hmm. no reason to like give that to your opponent. Yeah. Wow, big game hunter too. Well, this is a really reactive reactive hand from uh Naria. But is. I think you should play the big game hunter anyway. Uh yeah, you could do. I mean, if you already have such board are you playing a round combo with Unleash the Hounds and Knife Juggler? Right. Um, if, if he has it, you probably lose anyway. Because you don't have Consecration. Yeah. And you no, you're not pressuring him enough. Right. Uh, but we do not see the Unleash the Hounds top deck, so there is no option to remove this board right now. What pressing hero power does here is it really, really telegraphs a Quartermaster and might make your opponent panic into making a an overreactive play to clear a bunch of 1-1s. So you're saying there will be probably a knife juggler or mad scientist play? Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to know to say what you expect from your opponent to answer this, but honestly, if you see your opponent just hero power on turn four to make a bunch of 1-1s on the board, the only read you can possibly have is Quartermaster, right? So. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he, di he doesn't kill it. Like any kind of the 1-1s. Interesting. So hmm. I guess... He's just accepting at this point that, you know, even if he takes one of these 1-1s down here, Quartermaster still wins the game for Nyria. So if you can't beat the card anyway, just ignore it and just hope they don't have it. So I think that's probably the right play. Just hope he doesn't have it. Just preserve your bow charge for, for something better. 
Um, all right. So he's going to attack first and then consecrate, and then next turn allow. Why would, why wouldn't you trigger the trap this turn? That's what I'm worried about because he's already seen Web Spinner, so he knows this is a slower deck, and therefore the most likely trap is Freezing Trap, and the second mm -hmm. most likely trap mm -hmm. is Snake Trap. So he should be pretty confident it's not explosive. Um, so yeah, it seems like a weird play not to just not freeze a 1 1 that turn. Wow. Oh. Not many, you don't lose many jousts against a two drop, but Web Spinner, not the card he wanted to see out of the joust there. Don't you think you should play the second Alec now? Yeah, second Alec seemed reasonable, but it depends a lot on his uh, trap makeup as well as what trap that is, and that does appear now to be Snake Trap. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason why would I would like to play the second Alec is to fuck. Uh, is to to have a chance to cure out a Savannah High Main Ooh. next turn. Uh, yeah, no, I guess that's true. Oh, double Hunter's Mark. Oh, oh definitely, that's the play. Wow. So King's Alec here. He'd love to actually draw another card. Oh, oh web double. Spinner. That's a single web spinner in the deck. I mean, he probably wouldn't have anything. Um, because even the Savannah Hyman, like the Savannah Hyman is probably the, the um, most expensive card in the deck, right? Right. Or poten so, potentially a boom. But, yeah. Or potentially a boom. So only the boom would would win against the Savannahs. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't really matter that it was Web Spinner. It was just kind of an mm -hmm. amusing thing. The one Web Spinner in the deck comes out and ruins the Joust twice. But yeah. Hunter sat here with a board of, you know, not very much. Sure, it's nine damage a turn if it goes unchecked, but it's not exactly the most robust of boards. Anything like a Muster for Battle or a Consecrate is going to deal with this board pretty efficiently over time. And his one card in hand is a Hunter's Mark. So he's going to be relying on uh, something that Midrange Hunter does do quite well, and that's drawing power consistently every turn. He does still have probably double Shredder, double uh, High Main, a Lower Feb, maybe a Boom, stuff like that in his deck. There's the High Main. So the High Main does come down and denies the Joust, but the Joust there, almost entirely unimportant. He's just playing the 5-5 five five to have a 5-5. Five five, so. By the way, um, if you play Alex, mm -hmm. um, are you playing Ram Wranglers? Uh, that's usually the case, yeah. Uh, if you're playing Ram Wrangler, uh, sorry, if you're playing Elec, you usually like to play the extra five drops to up your curve a bit, and it's kind of a straight choice between uh, Stranglethorn Tiger and Ram Wrangler. Some people play two Tigers, some people play one of each, etc., etc. So um, I would expect to see one or, or both of those cards in his deck at some point if we get to see mm -hmm, that many draws. Mm -hmm. Uh, swings at face here just to get rid of the last charge of his existing weapon before he uh, hopefully replaces it with an Ashbringer. And I doubt we're going to see Black Knight in Hunter to, to deal with this Tyrion, right? I don't think there was a, a, a Black Knight in any Hunter at any point of the game. I mean, in competitive environment. Mm -hmm. So there's the Hunter's mark. And he's going to use his face Ooh. to push through it, which leaves him dead to two swings of the... Uh, Ashbringer, but it is just but yeah. straight up threatening lethal right now. Um, oh, well, that's cool. Uh, is it Steve? Wait, 5, 9, 11, no. 14, 16 damage? No, that's not, a, not that's enough. You have to do something about the board, and you can't. Can't, so you have lost. Yes. Wow. So, so Naria is being <laughs> just. I mean, no, I, I dragged by the hero power of his opponent. I was going to say, what has happened this game? Like. At what point did it look like the hunter was ahead? And then I mean, you know suddenly, what? Suddenly, out of nowhere. I think I know where where, where the mistake is lying. Okay. Uh, the lights justice should have killed one of the Alex two turns be before. Uh, but he has Area, he has uh, snake trap in play. That's why the oh yeah right. Totally that's why the race has been yeah. happening the whole time because snake trap is in play. So. Oh yeah, I guess doomsayer is the out here. Sure. Um, so he's gonna try for it. We have one in eighty something for a doomsayer. That is not That's a doomsayer. Yeah. So first game goes to Tom six o two two nine from Slash Wolves. Yeah, just absolutely stole a win with the hunter there. Seemingly, he just seemed behind for that whole game, but then that really awkward snake trap came down and just really limited uh, Nyria's options. Obviously, he 
the, the turn the snake trap was played, there was a knife juggler on the board, so there was absolutely mm -hmm. no there was no way he was proccing the snakes that turn. Yeah. And then from then on, there just really wasn't nice trades to make that took any um, power off the board, because the things on board only had like three power, four power. So trading into them didn't really make any sense, because you just add three more power to your opponent's board afterwards. And then by activating the race, you're kind of just playing straight into Hunter's hands, right? And you just lose the game that way, so. Mm -hmm. um, Hunter manages to sneak one out there, and it does look like we have a Tempo Mage from Tom up against the mid-range With Paladin. With Arcan Blast, With what's Arcane happening? Arcane Blast. What? I mean, I didn't see that in competitive environment at all. Uh, I believe I have seen it being used once or twice. I think I saw it at least once in... Uh, maybe it was only the last chance qualifier and not in the actual top 40, but in some stage of the BlizzCon progression, I've definitely seen it being used. Okay, so when you use Alkin Blast, you also use a Falnos and... Azure Drake's. Uh, yeah, I, I think actually Azure Drake is just the only... I, I don't think Thalnos was being played in the deck I, I saw, and I don't think it's really necessary to play Thalnos as well. I think Arcane Shot is a reasonable card that this deck might play if it was available to them. <laughs> I mean, it works now, right? Yeah. Sorcerer's Apprentice into mana, uh, an Arcane Blast. That's exactly. really great. Yep. By the way... Wow, Fallen Hero! Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have to go and uh, retract an Icy Veins comment right now. Um, so, so, someone responding to one of my articles said that Fallen Hero was fantastic in Tempo Mage, and I said the only way I can think of to respond to that is that no one in the professional scene plays that card in Tempo Mage. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh. yeah, I now have to go and retract that comment entirely. Look so. at that. Alkin Shot for Paladin and Dark Bargain Ooh. for Mage. Yeah, Dark Bargain not looking like a great card. Although Tempo Mage does often find themselves very low on cards in the late game, so... Yes, exactly. He might actually be able to get reasonably good value out of that at some point. But for now, he's just going to continue developing big minions, pretty much playing this just arena style. Mm -hmm. He's just played mm -hmm. a, an overstatted minion on each turn and just uh, kept up the pressure, so... Nothing too spectacular from his side so far. Uh, from Nyria's side, he has a lot of value in his hand, but it's a matter of finding the time to play it against this this amount of aggression from his opponent. I mean, the Alkan Shot will be really helpful here, because next turn, uh, you can just drop a 4-mana minion or just a mini bot and hero power and fit an Alkan Shot to kill the drop from, I don't know, whatever, because there's, there, there's always, there always will be a target for them. Sure. And Tom is just curving out like a god off the top of his deck. Drew the Yeti last turn, drew the Drake this turn, but is is Drake the play here, Lothar? Uh, hmm. He can Fallen Hero and Frostbolt the Piloted Shredder. He's going to go for a ping. Interesting. Wow. Uh, so uh, he I just didn't see that coming, to be honest. No, me either. He just, I guess he's just deciding not to play the Drake there just because it's such a good trade for the Piloted Shredder, but... Um, yeah, the, the, the ping and trade into 1-1 one, one was a little strange, but I guess it's just playing around Quartermaster. You don't want to give them that much value on the board going into turn 5. We do see Consecrate come down, and this is where the, uh, the Arcane Shot, as you talked about, is uh, pretty spectacular. Resets the board to a state where it's just a piloted shredder against nothing. You do lower your own health quite heavily in the meantime. You're scared of, of things like Fireball just coming over the top and ending the game, but... Honestly, is there a better play on the board than than this? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, in this situation... Well, the Paladin's kind of regaining control, but the Dr. Boom can change a lot, but it's still waiting one more turn. Um, double Frost Bolts. All right, so he's... If, he... that, if, that, if that spell part would have been a freezing cooldown, that would just be perfect. Mm, yeah, as a Drake... As a Drake coolant would have been a fantastic play this turn, but now Midrange Paladin's starting to do what it does and just climbing its way back onto this board with its really, really efficient mid-game minions. By the way, that's the second time this minion pops out of the Shredder in the last two games. That's very true. That's Valiant, right? Yeah, uh, Undersea Valiant, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Well, you can use Dark Bargain if you want to. You can. Uh, you do have a spare part in your hand. You have a mana worm that isn't particularly important as well. I guess you wouldn't be. Oh, ooh. Wow. I was gonna say you wouldn't be overly miserable to lose the uh, the unstable portal either, as long as you kept the boom in your hand. But yeah, dark dark bargain looked pretty good to me that turn, and we all know how dangerous this situation is. The, the oh boom, yeah, the boom the really... boom bots versus uh, Sylvanas situation. 
that's really uncomfortable, I would say, position mm -hmm. to be in. Because you have you have you basically say you take my boom, I will have to frost bolt it next turn. Right. From the bolt state. There's like no reason to see something else. Because mm -hmm. there's always this possibility. Oh. I, I don't think that's necessary. Because if the bomb hits the bomb and hits the Dr. Boom, then you get nothing. Right. I guess he just wanted to absolutely minimize the chance of it hitting his face, because then he could just die straight up to things like Fireball. Yeah, but then you only develop, like, Dr. Boom into bombs, and that might not be enough to win the game next turn, if your opponent is lacking Frost Balls. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, so we see 16 damage staring him back in the face. Oh, I don't... Is pinging a boom bot the play? Wow, okay. Hmm. Um, okay. I feel like you don't really care if your minions get hit by boom bots. So I feel like pinging the... Yeah, I would say the same. Pinging the boom bot first was probably this, a mistake. Mist that's caller. Mist caller, right? Yeah, mm. it is. I mean, it's a decent, decent minion for free mana, but doesn't really help here. And we see that Nyria is in fact playing the outdoor peacekeepers. So none of this dire wolf wonkiness that we saw from from Roger, just a a more solid, uh, consistent mid range paladin that we we know and love. Worth noting, I think the the paladin went zero three for Roger, right? Every loss was. With uh, yes, yeah. yes, the paladin cost did cost him the whole match. Mm -hmm. uh, if he plays Tyrion here, oh, punished. Yes. This Punish. Dark Bargain, though! Look at that! Mistcaller into Dark Bargain. You play it, right? Like it, Yes, it, of course. If the Emperor gets discarded, you just deal with it, right? Like, get, yes. getting the Mistcaller on board and Dark Bargaining this is just absurd. It is. It is. Like, the Mistcaller will die to the Ashbringer, yeah. but the deal free damage, four damage, with the Mana Worm. Mm -hmm. Wait, maybe... Maybe actually use the Frostbolt here. Wait, that's better. If you use Frostbolt, deal three damage to the face. You freeze your Ooh. opponent. He's then at uh, four, three, at three life. Uh, and he's at two, right? Because the Mana Worm gets buffed twice. No, no, I just already counted that. I did count that. No, the Mana Worm would be five because two spells get cast, and then right. Frostbolt hits face. Oh yeah, two, Eight. right? Yeah, yeah. Then it's a two. Yeah. But you know, the Paladin has a lot of heals. Right, and that play is really all in. A Miss Caller is a much better long term investment if you think your opponent is going to heal, but no, Tom Tom looks like he's whipping it out right now. Yeah, Frostbolt, Dark Bargain. We're going all in, boys. Oh, wow. Look at Nerea's face. That, that has to be a reaction, right? He kept the Miss Caller. Woohoo! Ooh, all right. So we do see the Consecrate. So he's not just outright dead next turn. But there are no heals in his hand, and he is going to have to pick up a heal next turn. Is there a way he can clear this board and set up lethal for the following turn? I don't think so, right? Mm -hmm. The best he can do is Consecrate, Aldor, and Minibot, which puts five power on the board. Yeah, so he cannot set up lethal. So it's going to come down to, uh, to whether he can draw a heal in time, because this is just going to be ping face, play Miss Caller, play whatever else you draw. Uh, oh. Okay, there's no point in playing the flame. Right? I don't. No, 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 you play it anyway. Because, like, paladins don't heal for small. Oh, no, they do heal for small amounts with true silver. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, you hold the flame waker because then you can potentially burst through a true silver as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If you draw. Mm. So, yeah, if, you, if your next draw was something like a, a secret or an unstable portal, you then potentially still have lethal if the paladin. Oh, I can has, blast. Yeah, if the paladin has a true silver here. So, yeah, I think it was better or better to uh, to hold. Um, this way, you need the board answered anyway, though, right? Yeah. Just developing the minion on board, you're asking more questions. Um, but, yeah. There's, I mean, that, there's, there's... that dark, dark, that dark bargain, bargain was just ridiculous. Right. The value of that card was just ridiculous. <laughs> the spell slinger won the game, single-handedly. Yep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why they call it Casino Mage, because sometimes things like that just happen. Yeah. And Tom is 2-0, mm -hmm. and he won with his Paladin, so he's now left with mm, Mage. No, wait, that was uh, what I'm talking about. Now he's left with Paladin. Paladin, yeah. Yes. 
and we and would Paladin. expect this to be a more aggressive Paladin than the one we saw from Nyria, Nyria because like you more said, so. like you said, the Asian meta is generally quite aggressive. Uh, I don't know how much specifically the, the Secret Paladin has caught on, but I would imagine that they, they love that deck quite a lot over in Asia. It seems like their kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like the theme, mm -hmm. I would say, of the uh, Asian meta game. There we go! We see straight away, I don't think you guys have quite got to it yet, but we do see the redemption has uh, has come into hand from Tom. So this is uh, an aggressive Secrets Paladin. It's just a matter of how exactly he's built it. Do we have the things like Tyrion and Boom? Um, Mysterious Challenger opening hand. Uh, but he did mulligan into it. It's not a card he chose to keep, mm -hmm. as I've been talking about at some length. Harrison Jones. Oh, this is Control Warrior, wow. I was expecting okay. Patron from Nyria, but he's decided to bring Control Warrior. Um, this is not a matchup I have a lot of experience with. How do you feel about the, how this goes, Lothar? It goes... I mean, that was a really common matchup when it were, uh, when, when the Mech Mage was at top of the um, chain of command, right. I would say. So it was a really common matchup when there was like a Control Warrior versus Mech Mage and it was... A matchup when the warrior was favorite if he got all those mm, weapons to deal with the minions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, I mean. That's big it. Yeah, Fiery War Axe, Armor Smith, Bash is about as good as it gets, right? For, mm -hmm. uh, for a start against an aggressive deck. So, pretty yeah. good start, but we do see Noble Sack there coming down and denying any sort of value from the weapon attack that turn. Armor Smith has no good trades on the board to make either, so. Uh, Tom is just kind of free to develop a board here, and he's fairly confident Control Warrior generally doesn't play Silence, so he's happy to put all his eggs in one basket here, so to speak. Definitely. And, Definitely know. because that allows uh, him to dish out more damage, because your opponent has to attack into that creature to give him damage to execute it. Other option is the Bash Fear War Axe, which deals with the Hunted Creeper, but still put a, puts out two minions on board. Mm -hmm. Which is uncomfortable for the warrior because we know that um, contra warriors are usually playing just one whirlwind, maybe a revenge. The other options to bring down a huge board is basically a brawl. Right. And that's it. Yep. Um, so he is just going to have to go for the bash execute here. Um, as you said, not great because uh, no. Uh... Sorry, Tom still retains the two one ones on the board, and he's just looking to fill in one turn nicely here. Oh, all right. So he whiffs. Um, how do you feel about uh, swinging the true silver at face here, since there's nothing else to do? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't do that. I would just save it. You know, it's too important for. <sighs> really? Oh, the Harrison though. Yeah, but uh, you can't. As I said before, you can't really play around Harrison. Even if you're like you're playing an aggressive deck, you're equipping a weapon directly into your opponent's turn five. Do you still just not feel like it's it's worth taking that swing at face? I'm not blaming Tom for not for not attacking with the Truce of the Champion, you know. Okay, that's fair. I mean, th there are different stances on that, but I feel like it was okay, okay to not attack, but it definitely had merit to attack into it anyway. The problem is if you're going super aggressive, Contra mm -hmm. Warrior, you know that this is Contra Warrior now, mm -hmm. that. He has a lot of life gain, and there are Belchers in there. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with Belchers when when you don't have the Truce of a Champion? Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he does have one Iron Beak Owl in his hand, but... Yeah, like you said, if it's Control Warrior, you are probably going to have to maintain the board presence to win this game, because, as we've talked about before, this isn't like... This isn't like the outright face Paladin that has, like, Arcane Golems and South Sea Deck Hands to to burst you from an empty board. You need to have the board in order to deal damage. Ooh, just repentance. plays out the Belcher into Repentance. Very interesting. The fact that he only saw four secrets come out in the tree may have made him think that there was no Repentance and he felt safe yeah. playing the Belcher. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That's, oh, man, that's, that's devastating. That's a cog hammer. Because now you use the cog hammer, you hit, you target your best minion. You kill the... The remains of the slime, mm. and you just go face for nine damage. That's just insane. Yep. Do you play the competitive spirit? I think you do. Uh, you just you bluff anything. You bluff uh, redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bluff is actually really important here for sure. Yeah, the redemption bluff is pretty huge. If you can get into like shield slam or one one here or something crazy, then yeah, that's that's pretty goddamn good. For you. 
<laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. The bluff goes off and like you, know, you you shield slam and one one. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna go to that level of extremes here, um, but still. And look at that. If that's if that's a redemption, he's like, okay, I'm screwed. Yep. But this is the right play, and he's gonna get the good news that it was in fact just competitive spirit. So just mm -hmm. another just another four damage getting pushed this turn. But the bad news for him is oh well the bad oh. news, the bad news just got a little bit worse because this uh this lowly mysterious challenger with one secret is gonna be followed up by Tyrion Fordring. Yes, and there's no I don't think there's a way. Unless there's a brawl, mm -hmm. but no, no, no. Even if we have brawl and the one one lives, right? Mm -hmm. Then the Tyrion has no answer, mm -hmm. and you have no answer for the Ashbringer, right? And that's the, like the so Harrison much damage. Already gone, yeah. Yes. Um, so Shield Maiden Shield Slam looks pretty good for uh, for Nyria here. He's probably feeling moderately happy. A little bit, a little bit worse now that he's seen that Avenge go off. But unfortunately, this draw has just been absurd from Tom. He's just curved out into everything he's needed. The one turn that he whiffed was the True Silver that got punished really hard by the Harrison, but that has just turned out not to be enough. And he has so much damage draw or not forward right now. I mean, Bash kind of helps, but. So he's going to go to 15 with the bash, <sighs> but he can't, still can't clear the Tyrion unless he tanks it with his face. No, you, you can't attack, but you have to use the bash on the fall free because that's the most efficient yep. way to do, uh, to like be still not dead next turn. Mm -hmm. And Palter Shredder kind of might help in case you, you get a doom save. <laughs> so he's still not quite dead, right? Six, that's 14. Eight, well... He's one damage off. Um, 14? Yeah, yeah, four, yeah, 14, yeah, sorry. One damage off. So... You didn't see a brawl, so you can just play the Blessing of Kings, go face. That's it. Yeah, I mean, there's a slight temptation to trade just because you get so much value maxed out of that Divine Shield slamming into a 5-5, five five, but honestly, putting your opponent to 3 with this board, what are you going to do, right? You have to go face. It's time to yeah. SM Orc. Yeah. Well, that's, that was a really quick match. It was. And, you know... We're not too upset about that, right? Like, yeah, definitely. Nice to hammer <laughs> out a, a nice, a nice three zero here, just to get us towards uh, the end of the day. Not that we're um, not willing to, to cast some more fantastic Hearthstone matches, but it has been a long day. So. That's the seventh match that we had today, and we still have one more, which will be Stan Sivka against Oskaka. But now, congratulations, congratulations to Tom. He won a convincing. Uh, he won with a convincing 3 0 against Naria. Naria never lucky, by the way. He's like always. I, I see when I always watching when I always watch his matches, they all look like that. He's getting stopped by his <laughs> opponent having perfect curve, curve, and you know just like a dark bargain from Spellslinger or whatever. So kind of feels bad no, for Naria. Naria never lucky, baby rage. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah kinda. Okay. And um. We'll be jumping to a short break and don't go anywhere. We're in for a treat because it's Stan Sivka, Dreamhack champion from Luminosity Gaming versus the newly recruited member of Navi. Right. It's back. So, um, see you guys in five minutes. 